College Sevens is back in California from the Chula Vista Elite Athlete Training Center. You're watching the West Coast Sevens on the Rugby Network. Watch and enjoy Major League Rugby, Premiership Rugby, Under-23, Under-18s, and so much more on the Rugby Network. Go to the rugbynetwork.com to sign up for your free account today. And a special thanks to our broadcast partners, TVX Video. TVX Video has been covering sports in Southern California and around the Southwest for nearly 20 years, and they are committed to bringing you the best live, local, and emerging sports. Visit tvxvideo.com or check them out on YouTube and Instagram at TVX Sports Video. I am Ian Denham from Noodle Bags, and I'm joined here in the booth by Will Hooley and Jeremy Ognall, just as the game has got underway in the bowl final, UTEP versus USD2. Let's catch up with the action with Will Hooley. Great to be back here, Ian. It's great to see Jeremy pull him away from the beer tent over on our far side. We are here for now the playoffs. It really is all part and parcel of a competitive event. Now these games really do mean something. El Paso in that beautiful orange strip, and then in the blue, of course, is USD 2s. We talked a lot about how USD have been coached so well by Charlie Purden and his team. A really good rugby program. El Paso really they see now the grit and determination they will throw themselves at this game and of course you did talk about that we are at the business end of the competition there's silverware up for grabs this is the bowl final and even though it is probably or is the bottom tier of this competition they'll still want to go home with silverware especially utep traveling all the way from el paso a hundred percent it has absolutely been you know, can't say anything about this commitment from this El Paso side, but of course, they want to come away with something to cheer about as well. They bust through the middle here and potentially can get an early cheer on themselves in the first moments of the game. Not to be referee, madam in the middle says no. And that's a pen there, and Chase Basson is going to take it quick. He's had a few carries earlier in the day, and he's trying to bring back some silverware for this USD2 side. He slows it down this side this time, though. That was our number six. Bia Mila, who we saw score a couple of tries in the last game. And as you can hear from the touchline, there is an extra bit of energy amongst the fans, the subs and the players in this game because there is the ball up for grabs. Heavily contested rook there by UTEP, but the ball still goes to the left-hand side to Chase Passan. He stalls a little bit and puts the ball to number four. Dustin Braun, who has a big carry and tries to put one over the top to his number eight. That is Dennis White on the edge. He regathers and USD are still in possession. Basson now pops one over the top and that's held. That's number six, Biamila again, who scored tries earlier in the day and he's got himself on the score sheet in the ball final. Good start from USD2. Unfortunately for El Paso, I could have drawn a circle around where all their defenders were. They didn't really fan out. It's been one of their issues over the last two, two days, really, just not having that organisation across the whole field. And in the end, the USD... Ball playing ability just beats them around the outside. As you mentioned there, Ian, a really high quality try there from University of San Diego. Yes, of course, and we'll probably get the replay of that one in, in a couple of minutes, but it's three minutes gone in that half. USD have maybe stood that little aggressive start from UTEP, and as we say that, the ball doesn't go 10, and They've handed the ball back to UTEP again, who'll have another shot at that real simple, aggressive style running that we've seen from them. They look like they've actually simplified stuff from day one. Yeah, definitely. And I think sometimes that's better. You know, you don't need to overcomplicate things. I was speaking to a couple of the guys when we were in the break and asked, they were asking, you know, what what do you do to sort of reset yourselves? Like, well, you don't have time to overthink and try too many tricks and flicks in sevens because it means so much. Every possession means so much. We just get a charge down there from USD. Keeping it simple is definitely the right thing for these two teams. That's Eli Guevara who has scored a couple of chip and chases and he recognized that there's no one in behind and he tried his hand again, but that's blocked down off the leg of a USD player and it will be a put in to UTEP. UTEP a little bit static at the line out here. You can see no walk in from the player, so they're just putting their jumper right there and they're saying he's going to go up and claim it. So a little bit of pressure on this thrower to hit the mark. It's gone low when they try to do one right to the front. The cheeky one doesn't work out for them. It's a knock on and it's USD2 who will have to put into the scrum. Yes, the referee sharp on that one. Great to see the Southern California Referee Society, of course, 
doing so much work, great work and great to see our female referee in the middle already doing a great job. Fantastic for the growth of the game. It's not just the players, it's not just the coaches, it's also the referees as well. As now USD come on the attack. Advantage here to USD and Chase Basson brings the ball to the edge. That's number 12, Connor Caru, who breaks the tackle and manages them to get around other side. I tell you what, this USD 2 side, although being a second side, they might show a little bit of inexperience. They certainly have some lads who can break tackles. Yeah, really strong running from the Toreros 2s. And in the end, it's another try, and it was just a little bit too simple. But you've got to say, this El Paso side really does try and work so hard for each other. But unfortunately, when you're not organized, sometimes working smarter is better than working harder. As there we have it, as USD get their second try of the game. I'm joined now by Jeremy Ognor in the booth. And Jeremy, you can look back at this just some basic movement, and in the end, just some power running for USD's second try. Yeah, absolutely. You know, again, USD seconds. It's in interesting watching them because they're better than their um, results show. I mean, they haven't won. You know, they might be um, taking this one, but they haven't won so far. But they've actually had some really good performances. But having said that, now UTEP is really so showing some things in the last game for them. And I love the philosophy you gave a second again. Philosophy with Huli. I like that. I think there we go. As the, uh, the beautiful orange kit of El Paso UTEP. Try and move this ball. They try and get themselves just into the USD half. Far side, some nifty running. We've mentioned Eli Guevara. Guevara, sorry. No, no, nice, He's, strong carry. It looks like turnover's taken. Yeah, they've picked it up. Dustin Braun. in the edge. Dustin Braun with that turnover, number four. And now it's another run down for Connor Carew, who scored only moments earlier. He's going to get his second of the game as he tries to go even closer to the underneath the sticks so that's a third try for usd el paso did have some passes of play but they weren't able to get through that usd defense jeremy and talk about turning defense into attack no ab absolutely el, el paso has actually had quite a lot of possession they just haven't been able to do anything with it and when the ball gets turned over usd is pretty deadly as we watch chase bass on coming off the field looks like he's got a rib issue uh, we're, we're coming to the half right now with kick to come. Are we going to turn it over in a second, Will, right? I believe so. I don't know, make sure the beautiful picture there. How good's a drone? Since drones have come in, I think the broadcast has just gone to a new level. Congratulations, everyone involved in the production today. Do we have him ready? Let's hand over to Ian Denham, who's on the interview post once again. Yeah, we do indeed. Of course, our Noodle Bags player of the tournament from last week, the tournament in Claremont, is Solomon Williams. Fair play. That's to you. And listen, this guy's been balling here for a long time. And just let's talk about last week as a tournament. You got MVP. I know it's not all down to yourself, but great performance from you. Well, I, I, I appreciate it. But yeah, it was uh, it was a full full uh, you know 15 man job on that on that Cal side, and uh, you know really grateful for the boys to uh, you know put me in good positions and. Uh, you know, really just to play alongside those boys. Great. Yeah, I've watched you play rugby for a long time now, and one of the highlights that we had on TVX Sports Video was the short restart. Yeah. Obviously, that's that's gone a little bit viral, but is is Cal giving you the, the license to, I know it's very structured play, but to, but to do those things which suit your game, which is very intuitive? Yeah, I mean, I mean, they, they, they give us free reign, you know, what, what, what's on is what's on, and, and especially the execution part of it is key. Um, so if you're going to take that risk, um, you know, do, do it, make sure it's a, it's a high risk opportunity, or a, sorry, excuse me, a low risk opportunity. Yeah, of course, I got you. And I was keeping my eye out for you for the first couple of games, but I saw that you had the mask on the face. Is everything all good? Give us an update on that. Yeah, I uh, unfortunately broke my nose this past week, um, but, uh, you know, that won't stop me from playing, of course. Got to get out there and, uh, and play alongside those boys. So, uh, yeah, grateful to be on the field today um, here in San Diego and, uh, you know, just be able to play even with that injury. So. All right, exactly. The nose isn't going to stop you playing. It isn't going to stop you on the Instagram as well. Get a few stories up with the nose. But talk to me about this Cal side going up into the finals. What's the attitude and what's the vibe with, with the boys? Yeah, I mean, our, our attitude, we're just always trying to improve each game. I mean, this, this is a two-day two -day tournament, so each game we're just trying to get better. And, you know, uh, we had a we started out 4-0 yesterday, but, uh, you know, USD gave us a really, really good, tough time yesterday, and so we appreciate that. They're a great side. Um, so we're looking to build on that from yesterday.
yesterday um, as we got GCU in the first game, um, you know, hoping to win that game and, and look on to the final against either UCLA or USD. So. Of course, and you're a college rugby player now, but I've seen you balling since you were just a little lad here in San Diego with the Carlsbad Thunder. Talk to me about your journey through playing rugby and now playing at Cal. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's been absolutely remarkable. I'm very grateful, you know, for, for my parents, all, you know, my family, my coaches, you know, for all supporting me to get here and, and to be here in San Diego at my home, you know, in front of, you know, a lot of family. It's been, you know, just uh, very blessed and very grateful to be here. So, yeah, class, lad. Great stuff. Prayer to you. We got a star in the booth here. Back to you, Will. Appreciate it, Ian. Great to hear from Solomon Williams. They're a real talent. Watch out for him later in Cal, but watch out here at the moment as USD get their third try of the game. And it's not just a third try for USD, but it's for a third try for that man, Connor Caro, who gets in 22 points to nothing. Poor El Paso, not the start they would have wanted the second half. No, unfortunately, more of the same for, for El Paso, and Connor Caro is exposing them. So, you know, good on him. You know, he's, he's having a nice match. And he's actually having a really nice tournament. He's done a lot of good things for USD. I have to say, I love listening to the interview with, with Solomon Williams. What a class act he is, you know. Obviously a really well-raised young man. And, uh, let's take a look at the replay. We'll talk more about Solomon yeah, no, it's a, well, it's a brilliant try. Talking about Solomon Williams, his ability to expose gaps and great handling. They do this just here, the USD. USD 2s. We mentioned this a numerous amount of times. This might be the USD second team, but there's plenty of quality rugby on display, which you might even think that some of these boys might even make it into that first side. We'll keep an eye on them later as they are producing to go all the way in this competition. The West Coast Sevens, USD now back on the attack. It's power through the middle, through number six, Gajabalia. And now just a hot step, very simply done. And that's the fourth try of the game and you've got to say is Ian Denham comes back into the booth. Ian, you just saw that try. That was a little bit too easy. Yeah, USD 2 and USD 1 have shown themselves to be pretty all-round sides today. Defensively, is really an area where they've they've shown their kind of style blueprint with coming off the line and attacking the rook. But here in this game now, they've scored some very tasty tries, I'll tell you that. A few good finishes and a few big lads as well breaking tackles. They have done indeed. And look, I don't want to be trying to be biased towards one side, but I really do want to see El Paso try and end on a high as we see again here, just the power that's coming through from the USD side. and. El Paso defending on the back foot. It's never easy in sevens, but Jeremy, I think there's something we're wanting to root for here, and it's maybe even a, an El Paso try. No, absolutely. They're going to have to come from deep, obviously. But, yeah, we'd love to see them you know, get a score. And, you know, whether, I don't know if they came by bus or plane, but you know, they'll just feel better about themselves if they can produce something here late in the game. It's been a long tournament for them, but if you just watch them and how they carry themselves, they're having a lot of fun. You know, they know they're not competitive yet. But they're having a blast, and that's a big part of rugby. Definitely mentioning, we've mentioned a few times about UTIP. Plenty of guys here who have not had much experience with our great game, Rugby Union. And just throwing themselves into it. There's going to be mistakes, but hopefully they are learning plenty. The only way to learn as well is through competition. And here are the West Coast Sevens. We're now in day two. They are getting plenty of competition. USD taking it to them. USD playing in that black and blue as number seven, Archibald puts that in for USD 2s. So now they're going to move it out wide. They've done it so well all game so far. As they continue to draw and pass that man there, Caro, he's already scored three. Does he want a fourth? Not quite. Good defense in the end. Good tackle from UTIP. Yeah, UTEP very narrow though here. Quick pass out to the edge and they should be scoring. He actually cuts back through the middle. Probably not the best decision, but they score in the end regardless. That's Repetti there. He really wanted to get his name on the score sheet, didn't he? He two lads on the outside and he said, no, this is going to be mine here. Uh, breaks a couple of tackles. Um, apparently he is a Noodlebags aficionado as well. So big shout out to wow. him. Thank you for repping the brand. He gets one just to the left hand side. I think he wanted to get that shout out and I did too. So we're stoked on that one. I'll slip him a couple of hundred bucks after the game. I was about to say, I didn't know there was a few brown envelopes being handed out around West Coast Sevens. But there you go, sports fans. We just heard it here. Noodlebags are getting involved, which is fantastic. USD then, that's another try for them. This game is getting 
further and further away from El Paso. And they're also playing into that breeze as well. It must be mentioned that it's getting hotter here in Chula Vista. And that wind could play a factor. It, it's definitely a warm day and the wind is definitely having an impact on my hair, for sure. If only we could get a camera shot on the hairstyle of Jeremy Ognall. Maybe one for later as El Paso deal to try and inject themselves into this game, really try and find something. As once again, the ball goes to deck, but the referee gives a penalty. So let's see what UTEP can do here, ball in hand. Decide to take territory, and that's a really nice kick up and over the halfway mark. As they build themselves, finally, with some possession inside the USD half. Yeah, you mentioned before as well about these guys using this tournament as a building block, having new players on the team. But really, if they can build on this great culture that we see, all of their sub supporting, their coaches being so positive and supportive, and if they can just get a little bit of a playing identity going, it wouldn't take them too long, maybe a couple of seasons, to be a little bit of a threat to some of these local San Diego teams who have been playing for so long. Talk yeah. Go ahead, Will, sorry. No, apologies, I was just going to say, as USD, just talking of San Diego, they pull away again. This man's got speed, number 11, of course. He scored previously, Lucas Hodgson, already in this competition. And with a bit of space, the number 11 for USD gets over for another score. Sorry, Jeremy, we interjected each other. Yeah, no, no worries. No, obviously icing on the cake there for USD. They were always going to win this match and they just uh, put the cherry on top. We've only got about 30 seconds left in the game. So, you know, congratulations to USD too. I know I talked to a couple of the players before the match and they were a little bit down about their results and being 0-4. But again, they can leave now with their head held high. Can indeed. There still will be a last play of this game. That's yes, USD 2s are winning this 37 to nothing. Just stepping, weaving out of tackles. And in the end, you can see all those orange defenders, they're all in that one place chasing the ball. But in the end, trying to chase down Hodgson, not to be for El Paso. USD with another try. We have got a last play in the end of this final, this bowl final. Yeah, as you watch UTEP, you can see just how naive they are. They just had the ball stripped there. It looks as though USD is going to go in again. Oh, nice, nice contact in the middle. Now USD, one last chance for them. A quick stiff arm from number seven. Keelan Archibald, the freshman from Connecticut, finishes it off in this bowl final. And USD to get another try to complete a good match for them. El Paso, unfortunately, with no points to their name. And in the end, we'll see whether this conversion does pop over. It drifts wide. So in the end, 42 to nothing. USD twos get the win. El Paso, not meant to be, but a really, really good tournament from them. There's so much for that program to learn. Plenty of guys are such limited rugby experience. I really hope they will be on the up. Jeremy, moving forward. Oh, pleasure having the Miners out here. Again, you know, they put their best foot forward. They, they were definitely outmatched. But again, class act. You talked about the coaches and the atmosphere. So I'd love having them back next year. Absolutely. Credit to them. Real show of effort and commitment in all aspects of this game. But well done to USD 2s for getting that win. And talking about USD 2s, Ian Denham. As fast as anything, he's moved as well to that interview post. He has got none other than Chase Besson from USD under the mic. Yeah, we're over here with the big band. I know we've had a couple of mixed results this weekend with USD too, but great to get the win there in the last game. Yeah, it, was, it felt really good to come come away with the win in the last game. Um, you know, the tournament didn't go how the B team wanted, but we're here to support the A team and uh, just show what B team's about. We're again, we're, we practice with the A team just to make them better. And just to come out here and play with the boys, it's an, it's an awesome opportunity. Yeah, that's great to mention all you guys training together. And we can see a couple of the style plays or or the game models shine throughout. You seem to be counter rooking and carrying hard through the middle. Is this something which the coaching staff is, is putting through to all you guys? Yeah, so uh, yeah, Charlie, Charlie Purden, amazing coach here. Um, coaching the University of San Diego. He's just taught us that we got to keep the ball in hand and just play as many phases as possible until the defense is uh, worn out. And then from there, opp opportunities will um, come about on the field. And from there, we got to just score. 
And um, yeah, Charlie, amazing coach. And yeah, we just got to bosh the middle. Um, when the opportunity is on to steal the ball, we have to go, but we have to be very careful to keep our feet and stay on sides, which uh, we got pinged a couple times for. Yeah, you talk about their boshing. I've seen you boshing for a long time yourself here, being a local man in San Diego, a yeah. Saints fan, and now playing in USD. Is it good to be playing rugby locally still here in San Diego? Absolutely. I mean, San Diego, amazing place for rugby. We have the beach. Yesterday after the, the tournament, uh, USD all met at the beach yesterday to go do an ice plunge. Amazing. Just the, just the culture here, the vibe, and like the, the opportunity just to like go to the beach after a tournament. Is, it's amazing. It's a great feeling. Love it. Keep up that positivity, big man, and yeah. good to see you. Good to see you too. Good Back to you, Will. Fantastic, Ian. Great to hear. Chase Passant speaks so highly of San Diego. It's worth the taxes. And anyway, it's great that we got another game going on straight away. It's USC now. They come into this playoffs. This is all for the plate competition, taking on SDSU. A big showdown coming up. Yeah, I'm excited for this. Um, these two teams have both been working hard. Congrats on making it to the plate semis. And I, I think we have a fairly even contest, at least on paper. So we'll see how these two teams perform as, as we move forward. The man in the middle will blow his whistle. Kickoff doesn't go 10. So not the start that Cooper Swan and the boys might have wanted gives SDSU the possession on the halfway. Stayed a little bit slow to get it back to the middle and that USC side are set. They're pointing, they're ready in D and they actually have Cooper Swan just in behind the defensive line, bossing things and making sure they don't chip through. Good strong carry there from San Diego State. But the ref has pinged them for holding on the deck and it will be a penalty to USC. It's interesting you point that out. Uh, one of the first times today, or in all tournament, to be honest with you, in, we've actually seen uh, a sweeper. Most teams have been defending seven up in the line, and um, obviously Cooper Swans decided to be back in the sweeper position. Yeah, it's turned it over now here to San Diego State. That is Grandy, the captain out there on the edge, making a tackle with his vice captain as well. He looks like he maybe might hold him up. Is that a all? Referee says no, it's just ripped straight up by Grandy, the captain. That's a fantastic piece of defensive play, and USC can come away with it now, and now they're on the move. Big one over the top, and we have a little bit of space on the edge. It's a one-on-one, -on -one, speed for speed, and that old-school jersey not coming in handy there because he's managed to get a grab on the cotton, and he's out into touch. But it's a call for a high tackle. I think he got him by that big old collar. I, I think he did. Yeah, the old-school that Will made fun of earlier definitely came back to bite them there. Will, you, you've watched these teams over the last, you know, day and a half now. You know, what, what's your assessment of these two sides and what do you think is going to determine, you know, who wins this contest? I think a lot of it is a bit of organisation, just in terms of we saw in the previously El Paso where they struggled in that last game is just no real organisation in defence. It's so important to fill the field, as it is also important in the attack for sevens to fill the field as well. So honestly... I genuinely believe the better side will be the one that's the most organized and plays that sevens mentality of having that movement both in attack but also in defense across the field. Ronan Green gets us underway and that's number two, Aiden Fleming with a big carry in midfield, splits the pitch, gives them an option each side, but they don't need it because that poach is illegal and the referee says there's a pen. Number eight now, Colin Albert, who we see get a couple of tries through the day, gets it across again to Drake Orberpiller, who's got himself a few tries but it's a turnover to USC, but the captain and big man will have to try running out of his own try line, which might be a tough one. He's driven the legs well, but it looks like it is turned over and it's back. It's really back and forth there, stuff there. It's scrappy, but San Diego State, because they're playing up in there, 22, end up coming away. That's Baden Davies with the try. Yeah, good work from Baden Davies and probably add on to what I was saying about organisation is just the ability to inject tempo, whether that's turning over the ball or getting a quick tap off a penalty. That's where you can catch a defence off guard, not organised. And that's exactly what's happens here. The turnover in the end from San Diego. And then you can just see the reaction from USC. It's not well organised. It's not quick to react. And I tell you who does react quickly is Baden Davies. 
Yeah, and if you watch that, Will, there, I think there were about five USE defenders around the ruck. So obviously that means there's going to be significant space somewhere. So like you said, the organization definitely wasn't there on the defensive side, and USC is going to have to figure that out quickly. Yeah, these two teams pretty evenly matched. But again, you can see there was three turnovers in a row in that first one. That's maybe what's separating these sides from the top two or three that we've seen, the Cals and the UCLA's. If, you, if there's one turnover, you seem to be punished for that. Absolutely. Turnovers in sevens will, will kill you or reward you, depending which end you're on it. The big man waiting for the ball. He looked like he was shaping to kick there. And in the tackle, looks like it's gone backwards. But that's Grandy, who's bust through a couple of tackles, has a roll and places the ball well. Cooper Spawn, Swan picks up. And it's a big one over the top. Is that off the leg? The referee looks like he's waving it on. And USC dive on it. Our man number five there does well to skip out of that possible penalty giving challenge ball has dived on this is certainly a scrappy game Colin Albert now they have a little space can they move it yes they can it's Ronan Green is waiting on the edges usually a distributor but this time he finds himself stepping inside Grandy finds that space no one hunting from that USC team on the inside and he finds the space back inside and gets himself a try simple work from USD lovely little cutback play on the edge the amount of times we said how you can change your line of attack against a drifting defense, whether that's with a switch, whether it's with a step, can be lethal. And in the end, SDSU did exactly that. A great try there from number seven, Ronan Green, who's going to try and convert his own try and make the extra two points. Yeah, well, I don't think Ryan Matthias will be happy that you referred to his team as USD, you know, <laughs> in that dialogue. So we'll have to clean that up and talk to him afterwards with an apology. Uh, forgive me, everyone. I just uh, usually am very familiar with the Toreros, but this, of course, is the Aztecs. As you can see, SDSU move out to the width, but it's this last play switch, a drifting defense, and then you come back on that switch. It's so hard to defend. Listen, we can forgive, foot. Will. He's commentated on 24 games. He's had three pints, four bags of crisps, and eight bananas. So there's a lot he's had to deal with today, let alone try to remember the teams that are playing in the tournament. My potassium levels are high, I can tell you that Too much. much potassium, if anything, I was going to say. <laughs> I tell you, in terms of energy levels that are high, SDSU will just gain more and more energy when you have those kind of freebies. Free kick now. And they've been gifted possession now inside this USD, or sorry, USC 22 skip and a slip there that's number 10 Farias Allheiser spreads it and they'll be looking for Colin Albert or Oberpriller who have been so effective in attack for these guys and again they go in SDSU look to be struggling at the start of this tournament a little bit in the top teams but now they seem to be coming into their own um, Oberpriller Woolery Cross Farias Baden Davies Colin Albert Rona Green at seven, who's putting the ball in the scrum. They all seem to be a little bit more relaxed and and what we thought might have been a tight game has, has now been a little bit of a blowout. I think the continuity of them clearly just from day one to day two, just maybe understand each other a bit more, but their passes are sticking. Good quality passes are sometimes really lethal work in the sevens game when you can get the ball to the outside so effectively that's what's been working for SDSU with some nifty footwork and cut back at Stai inside as well they give them three tries themselves 19 points to nothing USC the Trojans will have to come from behind Well, welcome back to West Coast Sevens halftime of the plate semifinal, San Diego State Aztecs against USC Trojans. And the Aztecs were up 19-0 with a very impressive first seven minutes. And right before the break, we had a quick conversation about, you know, how their performance has improved. You know, nothing rep replicates game time. So I'm sure they were finding their feet a bit, a bit yesterday. And now they, they've discovered the right style that works for them and they're exhibiting it. So congratulations to Ryan and his boys. Yeah, yeah, clearly Ryan Mattis would have had a few words of wisdom. Of course, already spoken to him in the broadcast today. He's doing such a tremendous job. Only recently taken that role at SDSU, the Aztecs rugby program. And he knows he's dealing with guys who have really only played rugby in only a few weeks, let alone some maybe a few years. So he really is 
hoping to build something special here in San Diego. Yes, of course, and you did mention that this is the plate semi-final. Although it is the second tier competition now in the knockout stages, this local team, San Diego State, will, will still want to come home with a bit of silverware, won't they? Absolutely. You know what else is going to be interesting is, you know, right now states are in control and look as though they've got one foot in the final of the plate. Um, in the other semifinal, which is coming up, we have the San Diego State second side playing against Claremont. So there's definitely a possibility of an Aztec versus Aztec uh, plate final. I'm sure Ray Egan and the boys at Claremont will try and have something to say about that. Yeah, listen, they can be friendly ones or, as you know yourself, Will, when you train on a Tuesday night and do ones versus twos, they can be some of the more aggressive rugby matches you've ever had in your life. Just as we say that, San Diego State inching towards the try line. He tried a little picky-do, tried to get in, tried a sneaky one, and it looks like it's knocked forward. And the referee's going to give the ball to USC on their own five-meter line. USC, they've got a long way to travel now, 95 metres, but we've seen them score a couple of worldly tries in the tournament so far, so I wouldn't be surprised if they're nice and calm at 19-0 and try to get one on the board early in the second half. Yes, Ian, as you say, this picky-do wasn't quite working for the San Diego SDSU side. Just close to the line. Sometimes a bit of white line fever gets hold of you, and maybe that one just got away as USC trying to build from their own try line. Put in from Cooper Swan and he gives it to his main man, his captain, Grandy, who actually stand, stands in that first receiver position. He tries to get one away, but it's gone back to number six, Shant Madajan at San Diego State. And it's Colin Albert now, nice and calmly, ships it to Green, who shows a good step with the right foot. And it's ominous signs here for USC as they're defending again inside their own 22, just as Grandy, the captain, has his effort at the ball and he's rewarded. Fair play to him, that's a great poach. Yeah, the Aztecs actually had a great opportunity there for the wide guy to run a hard line, um, you know, for, for possession, but he didn't run it. The player got isolated and USC took advantage of the turnover. So good on them. A nice clearance kick as well. Hey, Swan finds with a beautiful Boy, touch finder past the 10 meter line. Let's see how USA go at the line out. They're bringing the big boys in. And Ian, I'm interested in the term uh, picky do. It picky sounds do. like a noodle bags type term. I'm just picky wondering what it refers to. Snappy do to go back out the same way. Skippy do to throw one over the top. You know, you just get very excited about these things. Throw a do on the end and you're away. Yeah, well, I love the nomenclature. I really do. Don't worry, we'll catch you up on what the young kids are saying soon, Mognall, all right? You see, I got the do on the end of my do. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see what USC can do here. They need a score and they need it fast. And USC that is definitely not straight. Not straight, I'm afraid. It's the, the lads look a little bit frustrated now when they did have they did have a great game earlier in the day. They seem to be getting things flowing, but frustration creeping into this USC side when they can't get the set piece right. Yeah, it's definitely worth mentioning that USC have already had a game this morning, which um, I know some of these sides have. And, but they're just a little bit of fatigue. It's going to creep in this second half. The calls for send it are on the edge, and that they do to number six, Maratian, who stalls and has a pull out, and we're back to Albert. But there is a great hunt from a Eli Ibrahim to make the scrag tackle, and he manages to force a turnover. Swan scoots through, and it's a little one on one race now. It's going to go all the way to the line. Will it be a try saver? It will not. What a finish. Fair play from Swan. That's a great individual effort. Really good play from Swan. We were talking him up, the number nine from USC yesterday. Any time when USC you feel like are on the front foot, he has something to be part of it, was very much the playmaker involved that time. He was the threat, bust through the middle, and now he tries to convert his own try, which oh, just falls short. So USC bringing themselves back into this game as we take another look at Swan's run, but it comes with this turnover, it actually comes on from this interception, it comes from nowhere. Fantastic work there on the interception. And then it was just a matter of a bit of patience. Swan found the gap, showed some pace. It's a good finish. 
Very nicely executed, and now they're back in the hunt. About two and a half minutes to go, uh, down by two scores. So let's see what they can produce. Two and a half minutes to go in a sevens game. And remember, this is the knockout rounds. So it's two minutes to keep yourself alive in the tournament. But San Diego State have other ideas. They're already back up into the USC half. It's number nine there, Zach Cross in possession. But it's a turnover there. That's a couple of poaches on the ground from USC. And do they have time to squeeze a try in there and then go for one more again? I'll tell you, that was brave. Cooper Swan, smallest guy on the pitch. He was the one at the, the ruck who, who earned the penalty for USC. He took a blasting and he stayed on his feet and won the penalty. They're not going for the line at this time. They're going to tap. It goes through Grandy. And the ball is a little bit of a low one around the knees and it is a knock. And that might be the end for USC. But San Diego State still opting to play. That's Albert Priller, who's got a few tries today. Goes to our man, Robert Green, but it is a knock. But they won't really mind too much. They'll slow things down. They're happy to live down here, not play too much footy with a minute and 15 left because they potentially and most likely will have a final very soon. Yeah, you got to say that that might have been the last chance for USC to try and get a hold on this game as the clock ticks down. And you're right, territory is everything now. They've got to come all the way from their own 22. Sevens obviously is a quick game. It just takes one, one big run, but unfortunately it's going to be hard for USC. Yeah, about 45 seconds left, so USC really need to strike, and once again, they're going to have to strike from deep, so we'll see what Swan has up his sleeve here. And the turnover at the scrum, great, great strike by San Diego State to win the, the attacking over defensive scrum to their side. Robert Green to Colin Albert, gets it on the edge to Maratian, and these lads have linked up well, and again, Colin Albert will go in under the sticks. He's been at the center of a lot of things for these boys, and San Diego State now comfortably ahead of USC in this plate semi-final. Yeah, that's definitely a wrap there with about eight seconds on the clock and the kick to come. So Ryan and his boys can get in recovery, get some hydration and some shade and wait for a while for the uh, plate final. So congratulations to Ryan and the Aztecs. Very well deserved and sorry for USC. They had a, they had a nice tournament, a uh, lot of work to do. Yeah, that's the last kick there from Robert Green and he's got the hands in the air celebrating. They've had to fight hard to get that continuity going, but finally they probably feel a little bit comfortable with how they're playing. It's a 26 to five victory, SDSU over USC. We're about to see who they'll play in the final, but after that one, they can feel a little bit confident. Jeremy, what do you reckon? Oh, absolutely. Their confidence is very high. Uh, their improvement from yesterday today, as we talked about earlier, is, is big and, and they'll be excited. As I say, now it's about how they recover and treat themselves between now and the final, but they will definitely be a threat, whether it's against their second side or whether it's against Claremont, they will definitely be a threat. At the end of the plate semi, it's SDSU 26, USC 5. Colin Albert. Seeing how the competition was definitely kicked us into gear and gave us a good amount of motivation to just put our foot down today and really try to go for some some good hardware. So how how bizarre is it going to be that you potentially could fa uh, face off against another SDSU side in the final? Oh, it's crazy and and we love every bit of it. I mean, to see our second side doing good and uh, let them have a crack at us, you know, it could be a good a good showing for what spots are going to be coming up in the future and who's going to take them. So we're excited for that if it happens. Now, I was speaking to Ryan Mattis earlier, obviously what he's trying to build at SDSU. What's the culture like and what is he building? How exciting is it to be learning under someone like Ryan Mattis? Oh, it's, it's such a pleasure to have him. Um, he's really coming to the club and put a lot of 
a lot of emphasis on the teamwork and you know we live by a bunch of words we have selflessness and I think that's our our main word that we're standing by just being a part of the team and more than just individuals but coming together and giving everything everything we have for, for the Aztecs so it's it's definitely looking good for us this season top man well look I wish you all the best in the play final you're gonna either be against SDSU or against Claremont I think Claremont has just scored we'll go back to Ian but Colin all the best buddy thank you so much Thanks very much, Will. And yes, you are correct. Claremont have to score. There's some serious animation from Jeremy Ognall in the booth here for the side that he knows so well. How do you think they've started this game? Well, I mean, they started in a great way. And it's interesting. They were they were pinned deep in their 22. And a nice breakout from Luke Laskowski and great support on the inside from Captain Sam Brown to go in unopposed. Yeah, you've talked about a few of these lads, Peters, Rogers, Lekowski, and of course, Armand Mate. They have the cattle and they have a few players to win this plate, don't they? No, they, they definitely do. Um, and again, just like we talked about with the Aztecs, you know, the Claremont that we're seeing today is definitely a better side than the Claremont we saw in parts yesterday. And so they're all, all the teams are growing into the competition, but uh, as Mate steps around the edge and he's going to go in untouched as well. I think the difference between these two sides is, you know, the, the, uh, the Aztecs don't have the experience that the Claremont does with the Laskowski brothers, with Mate, with Sam Brown. And I think that's what we're seeing so far. Yeah, of course. You mentioned Sam Brown and Mate, the, the fumble at the restart coming from that great high kick from Sam Brown and then Mate jumping on it. But they'll probably need all of those players to be playing at a pretty high level for a full 14 minutes to put it up to the San Diego State side. Oh, absolutely. I mean, this, this game is far from over. And I think the thing for Claremont is they have taken the foot off the gas a couple of times during this tournament. So they've got to keep the pedal to the metal. And I'm sure that, you know, Sam and Marte and especially Ray and Scott and the coaches will be passing that message on. Don't let up. Don't let up. Yeah, just as we saw Marte go in and touch the ball down one hand, nice and calm. Just like the San Diego State one side before, there's a little bit more of a calmness about this Claremont side as this time the ball is taken by SDSU too. And they'll have an opportunity to attack now. Will, you've just joined us back in the booth here. It will be an interesting one to see two San Diego State sides in the final, but it looks a little bit unlikely at the moment. Claremont are coming out firing, aren't they? They are indeed, yeah. I did think it'd be pretty cool to see a double Aztec final, but... Claremont are showing all what they're about as well. Definitely an improved performance from their first game today is Kuri Kashvili. Look at the power of the man, the number seven. As now they look to move it to the other side of the pitch. Yeah, he's a unit and he gets it to Sam Brown, who seems to be the one really facilitating things. That's Mr. Zhang on the outside, who again, a lot of these one-handed put-downs are still haven't had a knock on in the try zone, but that's well taken from Claremont. And you can even look over at Scott Bracken there on the bench. There's, there's a good calmness about these boys. They're starting to really play well. Yeah, it's funny you just mentioned Scott Bracken. I'll tell you one thing he'll be saying is he'll be telling Fred Zhang to put the ball down with two hands. It's definitely one of his many pet peeves, I would say. Yeah, we haven't seen it yet in the tournament, but... Um, who knows, maybe we'll see one in the in the big dance in the cup final. But for the moment, we are back here in the plate semi. We have got the cup semis coming up after that. Uh, these boys are battling with a chance to win the cool. plate, which is the second tier of competition here at the West Coast Sevens at the Olympic Training Center. Just as we look at the replay there, possibly a knock on Will, but what do you reckon? Look at that shrug off. Yeah, got away with it, but it's amazing how Kiri Kashvili just shrugging people off and he attracted about three defenders towards him. So then what happens? There's space out wide and they move it there in the end from Claremont. But when you've got a player as powerful as the number seven for Claremont, the defenders are track around him. It creates space in other places. Yeah, we were showing the replay, but great conversion by Sam Brown. You know, not an easy one to put them up 21 nothing. Now a couple of consecutive penalties. So again, Claremont needs to stay in the game and, and not let off. And penalties will hurt them. That's Fino Shocknessy from San Diego State 2 getting things underway. Unfortunately, though, they go to the edge and they get it put in touch little bit of a sin in the sevens world on your first possession to turn that over and it will be ball with claremont again i don't think i've seen much of the ball in the claremont half to be honest no i mean they had it early and had that breakout but otherwise it's been down us uh sending a state's end sorry i almost did a hooli there and called the team by the wrong name but um i think also we probably will see 
you know, maybe one more score, but I could see Claremont slowing things down a bit. As Will said a, a couple of games ago, it's getting hot out here, so they need to manage their health, uh, hopefully in readiness for a final. For sure, just like Claremont are being a bit hard on this SSU side. You're being hard on Will Hooley today. I'll tell you what, we'll have to have some sort of either a wrestle or a race or a Bronco, or we'll see who can down a couple of Chardonnays quickest after the tournament. Yeah, well, we can't compete with you on the Chardonnay front, Ian, I'll tell you that. But Hooley definitely can put his best foot forward on some Mexican beer. And putting best, best foot forward, there goes Kanoa Parker. Looks like he's going to go in under the post. Number four, very impressive run. Good stuff from him. Shows a little dummy and goes in and heads are starting to drop from this San Diego State two side as we go up to 26 to zero. That was coolly done, as cool as a fresh Modelo. Really good play from Claremont in the yard, just pulling away. You like to think that the final is something they'll now try and plan for. And Jeremy probably also just create a few substitutions, a few tactical substitutions now to try and keep some players rested. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're, we're almost at the half here. Uh, again, Ray's probably already made his mind up of the changes he wants to make. I wouldn't be surprised if he gives Marte a bit of a rest. He's carrying a bit of a bum ankle, as he said in the interview with Ian. So uh, we'll take a look at this replay. And Yeah, ball goes from Sam Brown, and it's a pop back on the inside. An offload through contact, which was a little loose, but Armand has picked it up, throw the dummy to the outside and got through. Although that looks like a little bit of a loose play. Sometimes when the attitudes are high and everyone's positive, those things seem to be going to hand, just as that one doesn't go 10, but it's punched forward from San Diego State. Let's see what the ref calls here. And I think he will bring that to half time. It is 28 to zero right now, but it's all gonna be bumper matchups after this. We're gonna have the cup semis, the consolation games, and then of course the finals. And these will be all really well matched teams. At the half time here, it's Claremont 28, SDSU 2-0. Back at the West Coast Sevens at the Olympic Training Center. It is the plate semi-final. Currently, San Diego State second side are at zero and Claremont are ahead at 26 points. Um, it's been a really great performance here from Claremont. They've had times when they've, they've stuttered, they've made a few mistakes, but they really seem to be bringing things together. And of course, we're delighted to have Scott Bracken in the booth, coach of Claremont Colleges. At times, a little bit of a slow start for the boys, but they really seem to be putting things together now. Yes, uh, for, for a lot of these kids, and they only started, they, they had their first taste of competition just a couple weeks ago. So, you know, you got to play to learn the game, and they're learning, and, and it's showing. I'm, I'm proud of these guys. Yeah, that's excellent. That's testament to the program that you have a few new boys out there, and we didn't even realize that. But let's talk about some of the experienced lads. Sure. We have Mate and Sam Brown, and it really seems to us that if we're going to compete in that plate final, that these guys need to be playing a good game for the full 14 minutes. 100%. And, and I want to throw another guy in there, Nick Laskowski. He He's kind of the heartbeat of this entire team. You know, Sam and, and uh, Mate make big plays, but Nick is the uh, energizer buddy out there and just keeps on going. So we need all those guys to play well for us to be successful. Yeah, he's been fantastic so far. And what about your chat with the boys now throughout the whole tournament? Is there any sort of any sort of anything cultural, behavioral, or rugby that specific that you've been kind of chiming on the whole weekend? Yeah, it goes back to the guys being new, new to the culture, and we're instilling it in them. And Ray, Ray's run in the sevens Ray Egan is and he's he's doing an amazing job just keep playing you know get improve a little more a little more believe in yourselves and you can see the confidence that's brewing in these young guys and um, you know Ray's doing an amazing job with him of course so Ray Egan fantastic job on the coaching side you of course have been a heartbeat of this Claremont team and um, what can you see as some of the challenges as you, you've tried so hard to close the gap between those Cals and those UCLA's? Yeah, the hardest thing for us is uh, we're a really small school and the admissions requirements are insanely difficult. And um, we're working on trying, we, we do work with admissions a little bit, but we're not at the point where we can offer kids spots. Um, we can give them a read on if they have a good chance to make it or not, but we can't, can't uh, offer anything yet. We're working on trying to get that and that could be a game changer for us. If we, if we can bring in guys who want to come and we can offer from places to, to, to get into the school, that'll change everything. But right now, it's just a matter of we have to coach who we who actually gets in on their own. Yeah, of course. Yeah, you're it's doing, a tough one. You're doing a fantastic job yeah. up there of, of fostering development of youth rugby, and we thank you very much for joining us in the booth. Anytime, man. Thanks, Appreciate man. it.
Thanks, Will. Thanks, Scott. Great to hear. Scott Bracken, former USA Eagle. Top man. Good to hear an American accent in there as well as we just see Curie Cashvilli get over for another Clermont score and they are pulling away from this one. Yeah, of course. I know you mentioned American accent, myself being Irish and you being English, but this is a tournament really driven by the heartbeat of, of San Diego rugby from an American group, the San Diego Mustangs and Warren Speaker have really put together a fantastic tournament, haven't they? Oh, they've done fantastically. Obviously, we're biased from being based down here. Um, it's great for the USA rugby. And yes, my, my accent might be from across the pond, but having represented the USA Eagles as well, I only want to see rugby grow. And so what's happening here in Southern California at the collegiate level, or the high school level, you just want to see the great game of rugby expand and grow. Look at this wonderful shot. Or Curie Cashvilli just going on the outside, saying goodbye to the defender and getting another try in his name. Good work from Clement. That's one of the better drone shots we'll see of the day. Big thank you to TVX Sports. Whoever is driving that drone, fair play. That is a fantastic shot. The lads will be add, adding that to their highlight reel. Great contest in the air on the kickoff. Nicholas Gowski, shortest guy on the field, went up for it, almost won it, but the Aztecs retained possession, pushed it out to the edge. The loose pass, they will give a... A line out to, to Claremont. This time starting to wind down a little bit in this match. Yeah, that's just a little bit of a skill error from the boys. There's a couple of tired bodies out there, and that's really the, when the basics matter, isn't it? We're under fatigue and under pressure, Will. It's our game sevens. I don't envy anyone who goes out there and throws their body on the line and then is gassed trying to make decisions. It's hard. As now Claremont, it's a lovely line out play as they pull away again. Claremont, nice little one step to the front of the line out. They managed to regather, but that's a huge collision in the middle of the field. And it looks like he's grabbed it right in the tackle, but it's a judge to be a high shot. I know the, the tackle height is, is dropping in recent times and we want to want to keep the players as, as healthy as possible. So that is going to be a penalty to Claremont. Well, I think to a degree that might have been slightly harsh. I thought it was all in one collision then rip but yeah it does come in a bit high in the end it's a wonderful bit of skill though to rip the ball out in one movement through running away with it not to be though for SDSU and Austin Wang there the number seven for SDSU twos as Claremont now have this attacking scrum yeah that could be an unlucky one there but it is Claremont to have the ball we can see just over to the right hand side. They had Jack Rogers, but they put a sho shove on and it's a free kick now and it looks like it's going the way of San Diego State. And the San Diego State two side now will have an opportunity through Finn O'Shot and see to try get a score on the board. They found the edge with a strong carry, but Claremont to put twos to that tackle. And Fino Shakti has actually had a little sniper around the edge. Can he go the whole way? He's looking for a pass and he shrugs off one. Eventually, he's hit there with another track back tackle. Claremont have plenty of players around that rook, so possibly if State can move it wide, they might find some space. Again, some counter rooking from Claremont. And our number 11 there, Sean Taylor from San Diego State breaking a tackle. We're going route one rugby with San Diego State, and unfortunately that pop back on the inside is a judge who have gone forward, and we're back in the hands of Claremont. Good little series of play from San Diego State. They look a bit tired, but they're certainly not dropping their enthusiasm. They're trying their best. No, not, not the prettiest rugby by the team there. What I'd say is, you know, a lot of commitment in the tackle by Claremont. They were very bunched. If, if the Aztecs had looked to move the ball, I think they would have exposed them, but they didn't. And, and again, credit to, to Claremont for making all their tackles. Now they've got to solidify the scrum. Which Shove on from San Diego State, but it still goes the way of Claremont. And there is a beautiful right footstep and nearly gets past the defensive line. A little bit slow to resource the rook, but we're going to sweep around to the right-hand side. And now we've got a big man on the edge. Can he finish? Can he go all the way? Fantastic tackle. And he's bundled into touch. Yeah, great covering tackle there. Nico had a had a you know had the line in his sights but great cover tackle to knock him into touch and give the Aztecs one more time as as we get close to the end of the match poor Sean Taylor number 11 for the Aztecs he felt all of that but he really did put his body on the line to save it the commitment levels from these collegiate players has been 
top draw. You cannot, cannot say anything different. No, not at all, Will. There's no lack of effort from any of these teams. And it is starting to get high. Uh, it's starting to get hot. The sun is high in the sky as we up next have the cup semis, which are going to be ferocious. Great pressure from Nick Laskowski there at the back of the scrum. Took, took down his opposing scrum half, but Aztec still retained possession, trying to move and at least get a score. Which Shockness, he goes to Sean Taylor and he goes on the outside and he's looking to dot one down and it looks like he will. Fair play to him. That's probably the reward that they deserve, Will. Have a reward also for Sean Taylor as well from that big tackle he made, sending that Claremont player out into touch. That was the turnover that then gave SDSU the opportunity to get the ball back. And that's what I love to see. He gets rewarded for his hard work. He blitz himself down that far touch line. And SDSU twos can finish on a high. But Claremont will rightfully get themselves into that plate final. Yeah, I mean, the Aztecs will definitely um, take courage in the fact they scored at the end. They'll use that for the future tournaments, you know, retain that in their memory banks. But I think a good performance by Claremont, obviously not as good in the second half, a lot of substitutions. Some of their starters were taken out, but I'm sure that Coach Egan will be fairly happy with, with the performance and very happy with the result. And at the end of that plate semi-final, Claremont College is 31, SDSU 2-5. As we see that replay, SDSU 2 getting their only try of the game, but they'll be happy to finish on a high note. That's a oh, shock and see to Sean Taylor, and he shows some fantastic toe, a bit of zoom on the outside, and scores himself a 60-meter try.